French Horn Dent Repair. My name is Mike DeRocher. I'm here to show you a new technique how to remove dents from the bell of a French horn all the way up to the third or fourth rotor. A new tool that uh, I developed here at Cano College allowed us to uh, manipulate some of the existing tools that we have on the market and make it a lot friendlier. Now, history has allowed us to use the P56, but if we got too aggressive with it, the little balls that were created with the P56 could potentially cause dents uh, during the driving motion. The P56 uses this segments that join together, which was a wonderful invention at the time. But when you look at the flex, the problem is the balls had such small surface, if you drove too hard, you would cause a buckling. That buckling would in turn create humps on the outside of your bell. So we wanted to do away with that. How did we do it? Well, let's show you a technique and a tool that we developed that will cost you roughly about twelve fifty if you make three of them uh, using a plumber's snake. Let's, let's have a quick look. Well, one of the tools we were using was a tool from Votar. As you can see, it had a nice flexible pipe, something to put in the vise. It used coils. And you could lock it in and you could move it in or out. The problem we have is this plastic piece is a bit too large and limited to how far in it will go. Because the tube is plastic, we don't really need it there. My next problem came into the balls that we'd use to drive them. We had a small stroke cable, but it was very limited in what it could do, and we were very limited in the balls we could use. The Votov French horn tool came with a series of 16 dent balls. And because there's only 16, it's very, very limiting as far as what dents you can get and how far into the bell you can get. Well, one of the situations we looked at is we had the N57Gs from Fariz, which is a series of 101 dent balls. And I know Volta also carries 150 m dent ball models. How to use these tools using a tool very similar but corrected some of the issues that we had. This is what we came up with. So the new tool. Well, we took a plumber snake. Just happened to be the local one you could pick up at the local hardware. This one happened to be from Rona. It was 25 feet in length, and we cut it into three 8-foot lengths. So we were able to make three tools out of a $25 tool that we bought. That's Canadian. Comes with a handle, if you want with a thumb screw to do most of the work for us. What was the next part? Now that we had a means to get to the area, we had to come up with a system of getting the dent balls on place and be able to have them slide between so we could drive it and retrieve the dent balls when it was inside the instrument. Free's P56 series already had a large and a small stroke cable. They simply screw on. So what did we have to do? We made an adapter piece, which is threaded. The center piece is straight and goes in about an eighth of an inch. All right. So we had to make two adapters for this piece, one to fit the small dent ball driver cable or stroke cable. And then we had to create one for the large stroke cable that Freeze had. That's where you, all you had to do is buy the parts. They were cheap. They were less than like $10 US a piece. And you had the second part of your formula. Took a simple metal piece. And what you did is you would thread the end. You would then create a plug that would fit inside the cable. And then you would just simply braze it on. Now, you had to take the measurements of the threads so they would screw on. and then you were all set to go. All right, so let's look at the adapter. The two part numbers that you're going to need is a P56SM and a P56LG stroke cable. The adapter, once you make it, because they're not readily made right now, needs to have a diameter of 0 0.370 
to match the outside diameter of the cable. The plug machine is to 0 0.200 thousandths of an inch to fit inside the cable. So the outside and the inside. Okay. Now, for your threaded parts, the small one is 5 by 40 threads per inch. The large one is 10 by 32. You make these two adapters and silver solder them onto your cable at an 8 foot length, you will end up with the cable part that you've just seen. All right, so the part that we used is from Master Plumber, and this is the auger part that we've cut off, okay? You want to make sure when you do, you square things off so your cable is flat, so when you put your adapter on, it's straight in line with the cable. Let's look at the next part of the tool that we're going to need. We need some tubing. You can pick this up at your local hardware store as well. It, this happens to just be potable water. But uh, you can also find anything with a half inch diameter inside um, at your plumber source that'll work to run your cable through. This happened to be an old clarinet uh, blank that we used. We simply drilled it out to fit. So depending on what you find, you want a nice tight fit. You might even want to epoxy this in. But if you, if you put it in deep enough, you will not need to. A sousaphone screw. Why did we have this here? This is so we could control the cable and lock it in place so it wouldn't just slide out of the place once we put it in our vise. So this part we'll actually use to go into our vise like so. All right, so here's our tool mounted in soft jaws in our vise, and our plastic is holding it in nicely. We can have it any angle we want. It's set, and we don't have to worry about squishing the tube, which is important. Now, instead of the metal hammer, you can make yourself a second handle, and this can go on the actual cable. What this will allow you to do is allow you to drive or retrieve the cable when it's inside the tube. Let's demonstrate that for you. All right, when we're using the large stroke cable, it comes with a very large sort of brass nut that goes on the end of it. You have to remove that when you run it through because it's too large to go through the diameter of the tube. Simply feed it in from the bottom. We're going to use our screw back at the vise and our, our vise handle. Just simply snug it down and I'll hold it from piece. We can then place our brass piece back on our stroke cable, and we're set to use balls. So let's take a look at see what kind of damage we're going to actually remove. All right, typical dent placements on a French horn in the bell is where the kid has been holding upside down, and it slipped out of their hands. We place a flat dent here. Noting that this tool will work well here, but so will a lot of others. What I want to demonstrate is how we progress through the instrument how this cable works. All right, so we've got the tool basically set up now. We've got a dent ball roughly about the diameter of where the dent is. But we noticed it's hanging out and a little floppy. And that. When we're first starting out this tool, it's very important that we pull that dent ball back to the plastic and so it's anchored. This will give us a method that we can just simply push those simple dent balls out and give us a bit more resistance. Remembering that it's just a coiled spring that's holding us back. How do we do that? We simply go back to where we've tightened it on the vise. We loosen and we just simply pull it back. Retighten. Everything stays kaput. And our dent ball is now on the end of our piece, nice and secure, just like if it was on a solid rod. Using it this way, we're able to use all of our 101 dent balls, but we're now able to step up to the largest set of dent balls, all the way up to the largest balls you have, in order to work from the smallest part 